Hello, I'm Scott Patrick in the Dish Studio. Comedian and TV host Matt Eisman is so busy, we're surprised he even had time for an interview. He is the co-host of American Ninja Warrior on NBC. They'll have new episodes next summer. He also makes regular appearances on Hallmark Channel's daily talk show, Home and Family. And he was also the winner of NBC's most recent Celebrity Apprentice, the one with Arnold Schwarzenegger. And in his past life, he was a doctor, and he left that MD life behind to go into comedy. Matt is from Denver, Colorado, as is our Jessica York, as is our dish. And recently we met up with Matt at Denver's famed comedy club, Comedy Works, to hear all about all of his projects. When you see 15,000 people start to respond to you, I felt like a rock star. I'm Matt Eisman, host of American Ninja Warrior. We got four words for you. We love this team. Matt Eisman, I can't believe we actually caught you. Um, are you trying to beat Ryan Seacrest for the busiest man in Hollywood? <laughs> you know, Ryan Seacrest said something that I totally agree with, where he's like, I say yes to every job because I'm always afraid it's going to end. And I think that's, that's been my approach, where I, I, I do believe in saying yes to as many things as I can do. A, I love being busy. I much prefer working to sitting around. And B, you never know when something's going to end. And that fear motivates me. And I think that knowing the fickle nature of entertainment, that you always do have to kind of have your eye on what's next. And, and for me, American Ninja Warrior has been a phenomenal show, but I've been a part of shows. I did a show called Clean House that was a home makeover show on the Style Network. It had a 10 year run and I was a part of it for five and a half years. But when Hoarders came out, the show, within a matter of months, our show was gone. It just became kind of obsolete. And so, I never want to look back and say, I wish I would have done more. Or, you know, with the platform of American Ninja Warrior to try to say, all right, now I've done stand up for 20 years and to try to let people know. Because again, like people see the name Man Eisman, host of American Ninja Warrior in a comedy club. Nobody's going, that's the guy I want to see. What, what is he going to do? Say, American Ninja Warrior for oh, 45 we were hoping minutes? You would. Right. Yes. Uh, so it's, it's so much of it is trying to let people know what you can do and what you want to do too and to try to get to the ultimate job. I mean, my ultimate dream job would be to host The Tonight Show, but I don't think Fallon's going anywhere. So then it becomes, well, you know, how do you position yourself to do something along those lines or, or to kind of show people you have the skill set because so much of this is people see you as what you do. And so, you know, right now I think a lot of people just see me as the guy who can be really loud and enthusiastic on American Ninja Warrior, but I'm so much more. <laughs> and so trying to convince them of stand-up comedy or to be able to do, uh, you know, uh, to host a show, to carry a show with the personality, um, that's the challenge. So if Ryan Seacrest is too busy for something, call me. Oh, okay. Right? Um, Matt Eisman is available. I'm also trying to be taller than Ryan Seacrest. So well, I think I you, to... you got that done. Right? So let's run through your resume. Your current jobs, yes. American Ninja Warrior, yep. host on the Hallmark Channel, yeah, uh, comedian, and what else am I Corporate missing? Corporate speaker. And we do the spinoff show for American Ninja Warrior, Ninja vs. Ninja. Winner we of We just the... shot that for USA. One, winner of Celebrity Apprentice. I always like to throw that in. Mm -hmm. Yeah! Did you ever get to ride on the chopper? Uh, so... Okay, inside baseball here. <laughs> we shot the chopper scenes all before the show started. So that was oh. one of the first things. What they did is they, they carted us all out to an airport in Tarzana or someplace, and they had a helicopter. We all had to individually shoot our scenes. So what they did is they put heavy coats over all of us. So, because you wouldn't know what wardrobe you were going to be fired in other than me, because I didn't get fired. So they would have you wearing this heavy coat and having to walk to the chopper and sit on it. And then they'd film you sitting in the chopper. They'd go, now look, glove. <laughs> Did you cry? But they never took off. The chopper never took, they only took off once empty. And so, you know, they kind of cheated it. Oh, um, so now you know. They didn't have a chopper standing Fake by news. the whole time, right? Yeah. Which I thought would have been really cool. like. If Arnold did, like when I won, go, get to the chopper, we're going to work. <laughs> You're coming with me, Eisman. He didn't do that. Oh my God, that's a really good Im impersonation. It's funny, like, well, it's not funny, because that was one of the gambles, is I kept impersonating Arnold to Arnold. <laughs> and I found out later, he, he's actually sensitive to it. Oh, and, and But I think one of the things that endeared me to him was 
the only person who loves Arnold Schwarzenegger more than me is Arnold Schwarzenegger. So when he saw that I was doing it out of love, I think he really started to appreciate oh, my impersonations. Flattery will get you everywhere. It's, it's amazing. It is. I, but I am. I'm like, I'm staying at my parents' house, which is less than a mile from right here in Comedy Works. And I have the Predator poster on the bedroom wall. So I'm sleeping with Arnold tonight. That <laughs> oh, sounded wrong. I'm hey sleeping now. in a room with an Arnold poster. <laughs> right. As soon as I said that, I'm like, that is not... In today's climate, that shouldn't be said. Well, so yeah, you grew up in Denver, which yes. is where Dish is based. Uh, how does it feel being home? Because we've seen a little glimpse into the world of Matt Eisman. In the social media, yes. when you see my bedroom. Honestly, I love this. It's funny, I've been in LA for 18 years and I still feel like I say I'm coming home. This still feels like home. I mean, I'm lucky that my parents live in the home where I grew up, it's, you know, all my memories are there. My room is unchanged. and I've seen pictures of it. And I believe it's your mom needs credit because she's the one that is keeping the shrine. It is. And not I mean, it you know, she says, Matt, I'm, I'm 78. I'm a grandma. People think I have a 13-year-old son. And I'm like, Mom, I talk about ninjas and tell jokes for a living. You do. <laughs> I, I am. I'm immature. I've chosen a career where I get to be my 13 year old self. I mean, I'm hanging out with Arnold Schwarzenegger, like, you know, sophomore year of high school, if you would have told me like, you're gonna get to work with this guy and get to do these things where I travel around the country talking about ninjas or doing stand up, like, this is how you're going to make your living. I, I would have thought you're absurd. Cause you know, growing up, it was sports and academics and achievement and you, you worked hard and you, you know, you would get a career and work hard at a job. And I never thought that you could make a living just being yourself, this enthusiastic, ridiculous person who's happy to make a jackass out of himself and get paid to do it. It is, I mean, it is absurd. Like I go around and look at my friends who, who have real jobs and I think, how do you, you know, how do you show up at the stock market at 5 a.m. And, and make these million dollar trades them. and worry about it? And I, I'm working for 45 minutes a night doing stand up and it's the best. You know, I've been doing stand up coming back to Denver for 20 years or 18 years and now, I'm on a show with American Ninja Warrior. People know. Before, like, a lot of the shows, they're like, wait, clean what? What channel <laughs> is the Style Network? Or Sports Soup, or so many things where people just had no idea. And I'd, they knew me here as a doctor. I, I did medicine here. And so, like, you go off and they're like, what are you doing? We, 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 we never see you. You come do stand-up comedy. And now, to have won Apprentice and, and, and come back and, and be on a show like Ninja Warrior, to finally feel like people are like, oh. So it's working out okay. Right. So they don't think you you were crazy to throw away your, a career in medicine. Right. Today. I was just going to say, let's dial it back for people that don't know Matt's resume. Um, you're an actual doctor. Yes. Like, you went to med school. Yeah. And your parents must be really proud that you're not using your education. I know. It is. So, and it, I'm staying with mom and dad. My dad's <laughs> a world-renowned physician. He was a professor at the University of Colorado where I was doing residency. He was at National Jewish. He's literally wrote the textbook on tuberculosis. and. You know, for him, I think medicine was was truly what he was meant to do. And to have a son follow in his footsteps, I know any parent would be proud. And he never pressured me to go into medicine. But I think I saw the satisfaction he got from it and the respect I had for my dad was one of the reasons I chose the career. On on paper, it's perfect. I love science, I love people. I, I, I love the idea of, of being able to change someone's life. But when I got into medicine and I found that it wasn't it just, I didn't fit. I wasn't passionate about it. And the hardest part was telling my dad because I felt like I'm gonna break his heart that to have his son, you know, be following his footsteps and then say, this isn't what I wanna do. And the first thing he said to me was, life is short, do what makes you happy. And I realized how lucky I am to have parents who allowed me to do something that on paper was ridiculous, to walk away from a, uh, such a, uh, a certain career in medicine and a respected career to go out and try to do comedy. And I think that for them, it's true. I mean, they did want to see me happy and they see how much I love. Like they watch me on stage and I, you know, I love an audience. <laughs> I love having the cameras. I love Ninja Warrior. When I get to do it, I feel like this is what I was meant to do. And I realize, you know, how many people in life probably feel that there's something they'd rather be doing, but they're trapped. They're trapped in their job, or they're like, I just can't feel like I can take a risk. And I get that. You know, not many people get to find something they're truly passionate about. And so when you do, you feel so lucky uh, that you get to do it, and that you were lucky enough to stumble through life and find that thing. Because I think most people, 
probably find something that they're good at and, and that's safe. And, and I get that. And, and it's hard, I think, to, to, to risk, to, to put things out there and, and risk failing or risk having people going, what are you doing <laughs> thinking you're going to, you know, model, make clay pots or something for a living? Um, but I always tell people, like, you know, you, you, the best advice I ever got was life is short, do what makes you happy. Mm -hmm. You have two Guinness World Records. Thank you. Yes. Uh, how did that happen? How much did you have to pay? Did so, you bribe them? Uh, in full disclosure, Guinness may have found categories that did not have record holders, so the oh. barrier to getting the world record was not that high. Okay. One of them, though, was the greatest number of throws in a minute at a distance of 30 feet. Now, I played baseball in college, and uh, my partner in that was Matt Rogers, who did not play baseball in college, and is not that good. And literally, as <laughs> sorry, we're doing Matt. this, I am, I am, I'm sorry, Rogers, that's the truth. <laughs> I am going, I'm, anyone who I ever played baseball with is gonna be humiliated at this. <laughs> Guinness World Records title, 36 catches, <laughs> Then the other one was uh, putting on the number of Christmas sweaters as fast as possible, and it was eight which I think within three days was broken by some Swedish guy who did 14. <sighs> but we did hold the record for a period. So technically, I do have two certificates for Guinness World Records. Nice. Now, are you going to go back and try to win that sweater no, challenge again? Literally, like, eight sweaters, I thought, this is never going to be broken. And then some Swedish guy did 14. I'm like, okay, he was skinny, mm -hmm. and he had thinner sweaters, and I'm just not going to. you got to be a better I, honestly, sweater picker. I don't picker. think I'm, I, you know what, I have long limbs. I don't think I don't think I was really. You were made not to built for sweater. that challenge. It's not. It was really bad. Mm -hmm. I don't know that I'm a chef. I just think sometimes I channel excellence. It's not even me. <laughs> Home and family looks like it's a ton of fun. It, it really is. What I love about it again is they are they're like we want you to be you, just bring your personality to this show, and and that's what I love. Like I want to bring all the things I love to a show, and I don't want to be Sanjay Gupta, the medical expert. I'm, I'm not that. I left medicine for a reason. And to find a show like Home and Family where you get to go on there and world-class chefs come in and cook food and, and I eat. I'm a great eater and I get to play, you know, heads up that game with the Fonz, Henry Winkler. And I think to get to go on Apprentice and, you know, work with Boy George and, and you know, to have Carney Wilson and Wilson Phillips sing Hold On for me at the finale. That's and I'm amazing. like, right. And I'm singing along with them. I'm like, this is just like Bridesmaids. <laughs> it was, it's so much fun. The the things I've gotten uh, that I get to do is part of the job. You know, for you, like when you, you travel around or meet these interesting people and you think, man, this, this is this is what I would love to do and I'm getting paid to do it. Mm -hmm. So there's been a lot of lucky opportunities. And you know, I think you you just have to be ready whenever you get that opportunity Sometimes you don't know that this thing is going to be something that you'll do for 10 years. And I, I just think of that song, Working for the Weekend, or where it used to be, man, you had a job, and a job was a bad thing. And for us, like, I love my job. The, the real job is getting a job for us. But, but when you get the job and you get to do it, it's fun. Right? Yeah, so. Uh, don't tell NBC this. What I do is very hard. I deserve to be paid ridiculous <laughs> sums of money. Yes, in fact, you know, they should up <laughs> your salary. Hate. Um, what's Hell, next but, for you? I have no idea. I, you know, I've got a show at Discovery with one of my buddies, Matt Rogers. Um, we're trying to do a game show. Um, you know, in this business, you, you talk to a million people and everyone's like, we've got this thing, we want you, or, or this is gonna happen. And honestly, it's, it's one of those things where I'm, I, again, I'm trying to make connections. I'm trying to generate shows I'd love to do. I think another you know, type of game show, something, The Shiny Floor or Jeopardy or something Shiny like floor. that. Or, you know, again, a talk show to figure out a format where people would see me as something like that. Um, but I've learned, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm doing everything I can to make that happen and kind of waiting to see what happens. But in the meantime, just trying to enjoy where it is. So what's next? I don't know. You and I will have a talk show. Done. Right? Let's do it. Let's do it. Yes. The Colorado Connection. Woo! It's already named. I think, yeah. <laughs> there are so many places you can see Matt, it's really hard to list them all. So check out MattEisman.com to see his comedy tour schedule. And there will be new episodes of American Ninja Warrior on NBC next summer. And he also makes regular appearances on Hallmark Channel's Home and Family. That's every weekday on Channel 185. A big thanks to Matt for uh, coming out of his parents' basement to talk to us. In the Dish Studio, I'm Scott Patrick.